We're coming back to Do It Roger by Zap, who is Zap is actually from Dayton, Ohio. They're like if you listen, if you're listening to yeah. EP's enjoying Zap right now. He's on he's enjoying Zap right now. So uh yeah, actually if you you know in Zap in the daytime they made beats. The night in the nighttime they made beats, in the daytime they was a construction company. So the whole family worked. The whole family worked. It was just Peace to Roger Trout. Best shows ever. Right, best oh, shows ever. Yeah, they put a concert. Ooh. Speaking of concert and speaking of shows and speaking of artists, Jews, you said you are an artist. Yeah. Uh, did you want to give us like a 30 minute blow session? 30 seconds, Doctor. The 30 <laughs> seconds. I meant 30 yeah. seconds. Mm, I, I mean, I don't, I don't give up nothing, but since you asked, please. Right. please. I might as well do something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do with so many things that I could sing. Let me just freestyle something. Go, yes, yes. We we love that here. I think it's time for us to change and come together. Finally make a change. That's all y'all need. Oh yes. <laughs> That is fire. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can't be scared to do something on the ship. Yeah, I I'll ask you. I started the rap. I ain't know what to do. Hey. <laughs> hey, listen. I had one of my guests, um, Dainty, Dainty Lock. She did gospel singing, and then she started rapping in Jamaican. And I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> So right. she like, bruh, like you, you first of all, you singing gospel, and all of a sudden you rapping, you know, like, you know, like Beanie Man, a female version of Beanie Man. I was like <laughs> scared, but <laughs> but it was fun. But it was the thing about it is we like the one thing that said music brings us together. The thing about it is is like the biggest issue that you know we run into sometimes is promoters. Um, what do you think about some promoters in the entertainment industry? As far as you know, promoting the artist, right? You know, because everybody, in the end, everybody wants to get paid, right? So especially then, because they, they might, you know, either know somebody who has the club or the club owner and things of that nature. So, what do you think about promoters? Well, I think that promoters don't typically respect the artist. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them only want the best artists performing. They only want to go for the popular artists. And they miss out on the artists that are actually wanting to give things a try for the first time. Right. I am the complete opposite. I want you to come in when you are not good and work at being something. You want to build something just like if I wanted, just like I want to build this empire uh, with these showcases. In order for this to be a success, we have to build and work together. It can be I can have a show where there's only three people that come to, to attend. But if you keep working at it and don't give up, before you know it, I'll have a packed house. So I just feel like um, just having a grind about yourself, being able to, to say, no matter what, I'm going to keep going or I'm going to try. Just to be having things given to you is not okay. Mm, some people expect that. You know, this mm -hmm. is a grind sometimes. The what do you think about the work ethic of some artists? You know, the work ethic of some artists. Um, I feel like a work, uh, the work ethic of artists, um, a lot of artists are horrible. They expect because their name is on the flyer or because they're, um, they're entitled. They feel like they're entitled to something because they're popular. That is not always the case when you go out of state because nobody out of state knows you. So I feel like everybody, every artist should work hard at something. Just like me, if I give them a requirement, I expect them to work at that Grind hard like I grind hard when I am behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? We all have to work together at a role to make this thing a success. Right. Shout out to Don Lynn Chioka all the way from Toronto, Canada. Um, you be safe as well looking on my Facebook Live. So uh, what about, I just said Canada. What about stretching the showcase out to international waters? You know, Japan, Canada, Tokyo, um, the... To, uh, pretty much everywhere around the world, like Great Britain. I said my church house 
is open. Okay. To everybody. everybody. Yeah, I want to I want to have a celebration of life because we lose losing people every day. Mm-hmm. Because love is is missing. So if I continue to just show love even if it ain't these showcases, just show love to somebody. They may you never know what somebody else may be going through. Mm-hmm. So if I say I love you, bro, you gonna do better, bro. Everything's gonna be okay. That's a form of love. So I'm using that, and I'm hoping that I can spread that around the world. Positive eons. I yes. understand that. Uh, so Barclay, um, you um, the same thing as far as like I know, you know you with the beat. So what uh, what do you think about an artist's work ethic when they come into the studio? Your studio, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, I could just say, you know, me personally, mm-hmm. and, you know, being an engineer, you know, I started off with the producing thing first, and the engineering was just something that just came about. Everybody kept telling me, like, hey, man, you're making all these hot beats. We need to record something. <laughs> so that's how I got into the engineering. My biggest thing with artists, as far as their work ethic, I just want to see that you come and prepare it because I'm going to send you this beat. You know, you're going to have it before we have the session. Right. I'm going to have the session, you know, set up for you when you come in the door. Everything is going to be set up for you. You know what I mean? So, you know, you putting that work in by, you know, making sure your, your verse is ready, you, you know, you down pack. I mean, I'm okay with taking, you know, multiple takes, you know, because some artists can freestyle better than they can. You know what I mean? They might have to do different takes. Right. More takes, mm-hmm. which is okay with me. But, you know, I just like, you just be prepared. You know, the work ethic. As long as you prepare, you know what I mean. Right. Everything is just flow perfect. Right. Well, note in in um, in the in, with the song "Boys in the Hood" by Easy E, it took him like twenty four hours to do the t- seventeen or twenty four, something like that. You know, and he said one take and did another. So you know, it's there's there's a grind. There's a grind plus. I mean, yeah. Jew, how, Jew, how did you get just? You said you your church is open. How did you, um, you just woke up one day and said, I'm going to do this? Yes. I, oh. I, I was woken. I was woke up by Jesus. He, he woke me up at 6 o'clock a.m. and told me to bring them together. Okay. And that's what I did. But how long have you been performing? I've been performing for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I was the highlight of the city of Lorraine. Okay. Because I was the one packing the house. And... You know, I took a little, a few years off to, you know, be with my family and stuff. Mm-hmm. And now I still wanted to come back and give back because I moved away from Lorraine. Okay. And I still wanted to give back to the community mm-hmm. and do something big. So you, um, pretty much, you want to do, you want to do this? Is this your first showcase? No. Okay. Uh, what is, what showcase number is this, or do you? This is part three. Part three. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the first, uh, how did the first showcase do? It was amazing. It was packed. It was packed. I think the, uh, the 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 thing about it is is that people want to be entertained, and they've been cooped up in the house for so dang long. Mm-hmm. And it's like you know, I want to hear like people like live entertainment. I like live entertainment, mm-hmm. and the problem is is that you know because of this global pandemic that you, everybody was stuck on at home and on Zoom calls and make your head spin. Right. So now everybody you know people start opening up, the vaccines out there. You know, people getting it, and now they want to start being entertained in the world again. Safety, of course. Right. But uh, Barclay, how yes. how long have you been making beats for? What got you interested in making beats? Well, I'm 29 years young, as of today, and I started making beats um, when I was around 12, 12, 13 years mm. old. The reason why I got into it because I couldn't rap. <laughs> uh, my cousins, you know, me and my cousins and I, they were the rappers. Uh-huh. You know, my older cousin, uh, E, he was like, yo, Sean, you know, can you try this out? He gave me the FL Studio. I think it was FL Studio 1. Okay. Well, it was called Fruity Loops, but I do know FL Studio users, we don't like the Fruity Loops. And Fruity Loops, Loops. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's FL Studio. So long story short, yeah, I got into doing that, you know, and he helped me out and showed me, you know, the little ropes, and I fell in love with it, you know, and I never wanted to stop, you know. I started having kids, and I needed to stop of that but uh-huh. you know now you back yeah, into it back so, at it I've been back at it for since 2016 when I really really started taking it really serious um and I'll say about since last year is when I decided you know I need to turn this expensive hobby into a career so right you know, exactly. I've been doing it for a while you know but yeah and, and the thing about it is like people are looking for new stuff you never know who will be using one of like yeah. Megan Thee Stallion or um 
who's that guy? Kendrick Lamar, you know, things of that nature will be using it. And, you know, and you're a parent. Jews, you're a parent. So, you know, y'all got to build, you know, um, you got to build stuff for the future generations, which we heard one of them on the mic right here. So uh, the thing is, is that before we get, before we go, thank you, E. Before we go, if th- I want to thank you both for coming out. And when is it, what time is the showcase tomorrow in Lorraine? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock p.m.? Yeah. Shop, they better be there, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Down. Right, exactly. It's going down on Lorraine, Ohio. Oh, yeah. You better get out of the NHM shop. What's the address again? 1620 Kansas Avenue. Okay, and that's the nice of Columbus out in Lorraine, correct? Yes. All right. So if nobody tells you that they love you today, I do. In remembrance to Shock G and Hunky Hump, we're playing the Humpty Dance in here right now. So peace, love, and hair grease. We out of here. Okay.